Okay, fine. Uh, so hi, uh, this is my first session with you. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, so my name is Sriram. Uh, I usually teach uh, the verbal part of CAT and other exams. And I also teach uh, com the, the complete GMAT part for students. Uh, regarding my credentials, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Others, I think Ankur can't hear me. Is it the same with everyone else? Okay, you guys can hear, right? Ankur, probably, I don't know. Uh, I hope he has not muted it. But anyway, I think let's let's get started. So coming back to me, my uh, with regard to what I do, I usually tease the verbal part of uh, CAT and other MBA entrance exams. And uh, I regarding the scores that I have, uh, so last year I took CAT and I got a 99.98 in the verbal section. And uh, even this year, CET, I had a score of 99.99. Uh, so probably you can say that I know the stuff that I teach. So anyway, coming back to today's session, uh, the first session will be on parajumbles. Feel free to pause me or feel free to stop me anytime if you're not comfortable with any part that I'm mentioning, no matter how uh, stupid you think the query is. So don't worry about that. Just feel free to type in and I'll address your queries right then and there. Okay, so the first session that we will do will be on parajumbles. And then for the sessions, we look at the other topics that are more important for CAC. So we look at reading comprehension, we look at paragraph summary and so on. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, parajumbles, as uh, people who have taken the CAT would already know, is nothing but uh, a question type in which you have four or five or six sentences that are jumbled up. And your basic objective or the basic aim of solving that question or solving these questions is to arrange them in a logical order. Okay, so you will have five or six sentences that are jumbled up and you have to arrange them in such a way such that they make logical sense. Uh, just give me a second, I'll just address this query. Yeah. So, uh, in this question type, you simply have to rearrange the, uh, rearrange the sentences in a logical order so that they make sense. Again, as we do the examples today, I think it will become a lot more clear for people who have not attended this question type before. Okay. Uh, also, if a small request, please switch off your webcams. Uh, if you start the video, then everyone can see you. I don't think there is any point in that. Okay, so switch off your webcams and then we can start get started. Regarding strategies by which you solve these uh, question types, there are four. Uh, uh, these are four of the more important uh, strategies that you can use to solve these questions. So the first one is something called as transition words. Now by transition words, I mean words such as uh, before, uh, because, again, besides, as a result, however, still, and so on. So words that you generally use either at the beginning of the sentence or as a way uh, to change the way in which the, uh, the, uh, the way in which the paragraph is flowing. For example, uh, let me give you a sentence. Uh, a, a sentence could be that uh, an MP was found assaulting a, uh, a duty staff in a recent, uh, in an airport. Therefore, he should be arrested and thrown in jail. Now, the word therefore indicates that the second part of the sentence has to flow from some other sentence. So, the first sentence is the one which sets the context and the second sentence gives you the result of this. And that is why you use the word therefore, right? So, whenever you use transition words, it gives you an indication of how the sentence is going to flow. Is it going to be uh, logically, uh, it is, going to, is it going to give you the result of the previous sentence or is it going to change the flow? For example, if I use but, or if I use however, all these are words which change the flow of the sentence. So if I say that this is what he did, however, because of this, no one should look at him in a uh, negative way. So if I say this, then however, it changes the flow of the sentence, right? So whenever you're looking at uh, different sentences, look out for these words. I think these words are probably the most important thing that can help you solve these question types. So look out for these words such as but, however, therefore, besides, again, first, second. So all these are examples of transition words which give you an idea as to how two sentences should mix and match. Okay. The second one will be nouns and pronouns. So by nouns and pronouns, I mean that whenever I have a noun, if I want to indicate that noun again, I can replace it with a pronoun. 
for example if i say that uh, let's take the current case if i say that for example ankur is not able to hear my voice hence he should check the volume so i won't repeat the word ankur again and again right i won't repeat the noun again and again instead of repeating the noun we use the case, we use a pronoun there so whenever we want to repeat a noun again and again instead of repeating that noun we instead use a pronoun so we use him or her or whatever whatever be the pronoun and we use that again and again so logically the pronoun should always come after the noun that means if you are having a pronoun in a sentence always go and check as to which noun is the pronoun referring to okay so the noun that the pronoun refers to is logic is called as the antecedent so if you look at the grammatical term for this the noun that the pronoun is referring to is called as the antecedent so in a sentence if you see a pronoun for example if you say that he did this immediately check as to what is the antecedent of he so the moment you get the noun logically the noun should come before the pronoun okay so whenever you have noun pronoun relationships logically the sentence that contains a noun should always come before the sentence that contains a pronoun this is the second part the third case is with regard to abbreviations there will be some sentences in which you have an abbreviation given and the full form of it is explained right then and there and then that and then that abbreviation is used in further sentences for example if i have to give you a sentence the first sentence would be the british broadcasting corporation in brackets bbc is a news organization based in london now the second sentence based on this would be the bbc is also present in many other countries now the second time when i use this sentence i won't say the british broadcasting corporation again and again right i have already defined the abbreviation for this and i'll simply use that abbreviation again and again in further sentences so whenever you see an abbreviation in any sentence go and check among the remaining sentences if the full form is defined if the full form is defined in any of the earlier sentences then obviously that sentence should come before the one in which the abbreviation should should be used okay and the last one is chronology chronology would be uh, basically using elements of time so chrono as you probably know is the root word for time so whenever you are having any two or three sentences in which there is an element of time involved usually this the uh, sentence which is the which indicates the earliest action will come first and then the sentence which indicates the the later action will come later on right for example uh, if i have to take a, if i have to make a sentence i will say that the first battle of panipat was bought, was fought in let's say something some year so 1300 and whatever 50 for example now the second sentence will be however the second battle of panipat was fought 100 years later now obviously logically looking at these two sentences the sentence that contains the first battle of panipat should come earlier before the uh, before the sentence that contains the second battle right so this is what is basically indicated by chronology so whenever you have two sentences in which there is an element of time in most of the cases the sentence that that depicts the earlier action will come first the sentence that depicts the later action will come next all right again it may be a little fuzzy for you based only on whatever i mentioned because you not applied this in any strategy so far uh, we are not applied this in any question so far but once we start solving questions i think it will become a lot more clear okay is this fine so far any doubts should i explain any other part again or should i go on okay fine uh, i'll go on let's go to questions now uh, let's try one question at a time so what i have done is in in the first slide i have blanked out all the other options okay so you only have the four sentences now you try making uh, you try making the order of the sentences properly without without noticing the options once you have done it i'll go to the next slide which contains the options and then you can see as to whether you have got it right or not okay so just try this out try and figure out without looking at the options at all so try and try take a take a minute and try and get this
yeah i think there's an easy one to start off with uh so yes all of you have got this correct okay let me just explain this quickly again what i mentioned in terms of noun pronoun relationship so you have the pronoun here which is he uh who, what is the antecedent of this pronoun it's obviously uh, loop in this sentence right in b so obviously b should come before d i'm not saying it should immediately come before d but it should be somewhere before uh, before d for sure okay so now look at the meaning of the sentence you are you are saying that uh, he got up first and walked out of the office into the main hall and what is happening afterwards afterwards he is getting a cup of water from the cooler he is gulping it down as he looked out of the hallway window and once he is looking out of the hallway window what is he seeing he is seeing what is the outside view right and he is comparing it with what it was earlier when he drove to the institute and what it is right now that is it is full daylight so basically the order will be b d a and c once he is looking out of the hallway window then you get the comparison between what it was earlier in a and what it is now in c so that is the reason why b d a c is the answer so i think all of you got this right i think this was a pretty straightforward one again if anyone has any queries if i should explain it a little further then just let me know just talk me at any point in time okay so again these were the options not really needed in this case but anyway bdac is the answer so option 3 is the answer in this case all right so in uh, for those who again of you who are new to cat uh, in cat you generally won't have the options for para jumbles so this is the theta question type where you have to type in the answer so you won't have the options you simply have to take a look at the sentences that are given and you have to write down the arrangement as the others are given as the others are written down in the in the uh, chat window right so you simply have to write down b d a c in that logical order in some other exams in few of the other exams uh, for zat for uh, zat as ex as an example you will generally have the options so it becomes a lot more easier to solve this question type anyway coming to the second question again a question from first well cat this question is probably meant to be solved with options but anyway doesn't matter i think uh, the objective behind not giving the options is to simply try and identify the links okay so again good try by two people but then uh, both of you are incorrect so just see if you can check uh, check the uh, pattern again Okay, fifteen more seconds.
Yeah, I think some of you have got it right. The answer is F D E B A C. Yeah, F D E B A C is the answer. Again, in these questions, uh, probably the best way is to look for the easiest links to find. And in this case, probably the easiest link to form was between sentence uh, in sentence A, B, and C, right? So you are you are talking about three eras. The moment you see something like this, right, where you have contrast. So if you say that in seventeen eighteen this was done, however, this was done somewhere some in some other time. So the moment you have this contrast, immediately check as to which should come first and which should come second. And most probably the sentences will come together. Okay, not always the case, but most probably it will come together. But anyway, coming to back to this uh, particular question, so you have industrial era, agrarian era, and information era. Logically speaking, what would come first? Even if you knew a little bit of general knowledge, even without looking at the uh, rest of the sentence, you would probably know that the agricultural era came first, then the industrial era, and then and then the information era, right? So logically, that would be the flow. And even if you read the complete sentence, you would get an idea as to what we are actually saying. So look at B. B says in the agrarian era, if you need to destroy the enemy's productive capacity, what you need to do is to burn the fields. A says industrial era, what do you do? You bomb the factories. And C says in the information era, what do you do? You do something else. So and it, there is also this word, right? There is also this word. Okay. Uh, yeah. Someone has a doubt. If you have a doubt, then please don't raise your hand. There is an option for that, but don't do that. You can just simply type it in in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So in C, what you can do is in C, what you have is now. So that means this is talking about the current context. Whereas these two are historical. Obviously, C will come after A and B are done. Okay. And among A and B, again, what is the order? Agrarian era will come before the industrial era. So that's why you get this. The link between these three sentences, right? You know that B, A, C will be the link here. Now let's come back to these three. Again, these three. The the problem is with where which sentence do you start off with? And logically, I mean, even without if you don't read the remaining sentences, then probably you would think that D is a good sentence starter because you have a question, and then logically you can answer that question and then carry on from there. But the problem is that there will be questions in which this is not always the case. You may have some other sentence, and then you can have a question coming after that. and that is what happens in this question also right so what is happening here look at sentence f f says with regard to defense the purpose of the military is to defend the nation and be prepared to do battle with the enemy be be prepared to do this battle with the enemy and how do you do this how do you do how do you do battle with your enemy by doing this right so in this case in this sentence the meaning is the more important uh, part so if you blindly apply whatever the the strategies that you know then you may end up going wrong in some of the questions some of the tougher questions so probably the most important thing in para jumbles is to understand the meaning of the sentence of the sentences so here in f you are saying with regard to defense the purpose is to do battle with the enemy and how do you do this battle with the enemy by destroying the enemy's productive capacity and so on so on and this is different in each case how is it different these three things right so that is the meaning of the entire paragraph you are saying that okay with regard to defense you do battle how do you do bat battle by doing this and this productive capacity is different in each case how is it different in the agrarian era this is different industrial era this is different and information era this is different and that is the reason why the answer for this is f d e b a c okay i hope everyone got this if you don't if you didn't just let me know i can explain this again so i hope you understood why d is not the sentence starter So if F were not there, then probably yes. Then D is the sentence starter, right? Because then you can answer the question with the help of E, and then go on to examples in A, B, and C. But then since sentence F is there, if you start off with D, you can't fit in F anywhere else. Uh, okay, Mohit, I'll explain D F again. My basic point is that if you read sentences D separately, E separately, and F separately, if you read F, then you will see this last part, right? the purpose of the military is to do what the purpose of the military is to defend the nation and to do battle with the enemy what is d saying how do you do battle with your enemy so it's asking this question right it's asking the question related to f and that is the reason why d will follow f now you can't put d before f because look at the try reading d before f so d will say how do you do battle with your enemy and f says with regard to defense the purpose of the military is to defend the nation and be prepared to do battle with the enemy immediately if you read it it strikes you as wrong because you have asked a question and then you are sort of repeating the same thing without answering that question 
So basically, whatever should come after D should sort of try and explain that sentence. So if you're saying, how do you do battle with your enemy? The logical follow up to the sentence would be E, right? Because E talks about how do you do battle? You say that you destroy the enemy's productive capacity and depending upon the economic foundation, that productive capacity is different in each case. And that is the reason why E should come after D. What about F then in that case? Where should F, F come? F should obviously come before D because F says do battle with the enemy and D follows up by saying, by asking the question, how do you do battle with the enemy? And again, that is answered by E and in turn e, A, B and C give you the examples. Right? So that is the reason why the order is F, D, E, D, A, C. I hope this is clear now. Okay, in case it is not, uh, don't worry, you can ping me after the session is done and probably I can explain it to you separately again. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so this was the question again. These were the answer options. Probably not. Uh, if you had the answer options, then again, it would have been a lot simpler. But anyway, go to question three. Uh, just one more important thing, which I would like to mention right away. Uh, since it's the first session, I think it makes sense to mention it right away. In verbal, always ensure that you read the words properly. Okay, so don't speed read anywhere. Be it parasymbols, be it reading comprehension, be it any other thing, be it summary or anything else. So don't speed read, don't skip words. Read each and every word carefully. Okay, you have enough time in the uh, in the exam. There are 34 questions and there are 60 minutes. There is enough time to attempt all the questions, even if you read it once or twice. So ensure that you read each and every word carefully, because especially in parasymbols and in reading comprehension, if you miss a few words, then you will end up going wrong. Okay, so read it carefully, take a little bit of time and try and get the get your accuracy high. Okay, no correct answer so far. Okay, uh, slightly tougher one, I guess. I'll give you 10 more seconds and then I'll go to the next slide which contains the options. Okay, let's see the options. Yeah, I think even with the options, this is a tough one, right? Because you are confused between one or three. So I guess the decision has to be which one is correct, one or three. Okay, so let's see. Let's let's try this out now. Okay, so how would you do it without the options? Probably the first thing that you would recognize once you read uh, statement A is this. Okay, what is this? It's a demonstrative pronoun, right? It should refer to something. If I say this chair, then I'm pointing at the chair, right? So if I'm saying accept this sorry fact, 
okay what sorry fact or which sorry fact are we talking about that is probably what you need to check and immediately you get the sentence which comes immediately before a okay so if you look at b that is not a really a sorry fact because it is saying do not taunt him he acknowledges to in fact he returns to the point often whatever but then c contains he that means the noun is coming in a that means obviously c should be coming after a as i explained already similarly hoffman the abbreviation or the only the surname of this person comes in d that again means that a should be coming before d right so the only sentence that is left which can come before a is e and i think all of you most of you got it right in terms of the sentence starter so e is a sentence starter right uh, e is a paragraph starter rather so in terms of the gap between words and rewards translators come somewhere near nurses and street cleaners this is your starting sentence after this a will come so michael hoffman accepts this sorry fact that translators come somewhere near nurses and street cleaners in terms of worth and reward and he accepts this sorry fact without word without approval or complaint fine so ea is the link so far let's look at bc and d c says he acknowledges to he acknowledges to that means what is it he is acknowledging this also is basically what c is saying that means the sentence that comes before c should be some other acknowledgement by this person that is why the sentence which comes before c will be some other acknowledgement so what is the acknowledgement accepts the sorry fact so he is acknowledging the sorry fact and he is acknowledging this too in fact he returns to this point right and that is the reason why e a and c becomes a link i hope everyone understood this if you have two in this case that means in c you are saying he acknowledges two in fact he returns to the point often that best translators of poetry that means he is acknowledging something apart from something else that he has already acknowledged and that the first acknowledgement comes here in a right accepts the sorry fact without approval or complaint and that is the reason why e a and c will form a link i hope everyone is clear so far with this but in options 1 and 3 again you have e a and c as a link so it doesn't really help you in terms of eliminating between the options now let's look at the last two sentences b and d b says but thanklessness and impossibility do not taunt him d says hoffman feels passionately about his work and this is clear from his writings now logically speaking which one should come before the other should it be d and b or should it be b and d once you read the entire paragraph putting the options putting the statements in place of the options then you will clearly understand as to which one will be the correct answer option let's look at c yeah it should be b and d right let's look at uh, the last sentence in e, e, e a and c which is c so c says he acknowledges too that in fact uh, that best translators of poetry always fail at some level if i choose option 1 i will put d after c d says often feels passionately about his work and this is clear from his writings but thanklessness and impossibility do not taunt him okay sounds okay but then let's go to 3 and check 3 has b and d so c says translators of poetry fail at some level but thanklessness and impossibility do not taunt him often feels passionately about his work and this is clear obviously 3 is a much better option because you are putting a contrast word in but and then you are giving the contrast in option d which says that he feels passionately no matter what other people think and that is the reason why e a c b d is will be the link will be the answer okay i hope everyone again got this in case you didn't just let me know or any if you want any explanation for any particular link just let me know i'll i'll explain it again okay clear okay uh i'm sorry i miss, i must have missed it i don't know i didn't uh, i don't think i saw it but anyway doesn't matter okay let's go to question 4 
Yeah, again, a slightly tough one to get completely correct uh, without looking at the answer options. Uh, but I think most of you are on the right track. So let's go to the answer options and then probably you can check as to which one should be the correct answer. Okay, so from the answer options, it should be pretty obvious. What should be the answer? Should be answer option three, right? I think what a lot of you have done is to interchange B and D. Okay, so you have written, I think, A, B, D, C, E, F as the answer. Whereas the actual answer is A, D, B, C, E, F. Okay, it doesn't matter. Actually, you, you are right. If you had written A, B, D, C, E, F, probably I would also mark the same thing. Okay, so because looking at the way the, uh, the sentences are structured, probably you would put B before D. But doesn't matter with the options that we have. I think the uh, the answer should be pretty clear. And generally, you won't have such all such ambiguous questions as uh, a type in the answer type question. Okay. So anyway, let's get started. So A says branded disposable diapers are available at many supermarket and drug stores. Uh, B says one diaper, one supermarket is a higher price, and so on, so on. And C says something private label, and so on. Now, once you read the sentences, probably what you can do is you can split the sentences based on two things. One is if, if it talks about uh, branded diapers and the second one, if it talks about private label products. Yeah, Sunny, as I was telling you that if you would probably, if this was a data type question, then you probably, a lot of people would mark ABD CEF as the answer option. So if you have marked that right now, so don't worry, I think probably you would be on the right track. Okay, so don't worry about this question. This was meant to be solved with the options. This is a CAT, I think 2003 or four question. Okay, so it was meant to be solved with the options. So that is the reason why a lot of you went on the wrong track because B and D are pretty much interchangeable in this question. Okay, so don't worry about it. Anyway, so coming back to this question, I think you could have segregated the quest the statements into two parts. One is branded diapers and the other one is private label products. So there are three sentences that belong to private labels and there are three sentences which belong to branded diapers, right? So if you had done this, then probably you would be on the right track. And probably the easiest sentence to segregate would be E, right? E says, for instance, only save on drug stores sell save on drug diapers. Now, C clearly says that only, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, C says that it is available and so on, so on, so on. And uh, it's, it is available only at a corresponding supermarket chain. So a private label product is available only at a corresponding chain. And then E says, for instance, only save on drug stores sell save on drug diapers. That clearly says that C and E should come together, right? Because it is talking about private label products being available only at a single store. And then E gives you that example. And then F again talks about private label diapers. Then store should set a higher incremental margin. Now, obviously, C provides the context by contrast. That means by contrasting it to branded diapers, this is what it says, gives you the example. And then F gives you, hence, because of this, what should be done? there should be a higher incremental margin percentage. So C, E and F becomes the link for the private label part of it. Now you are left with options A, B, statements A, B and D. Now A says branded disposable diapers are available at many supermarkets and stores. B says if one supermarket sets a higher price and customers may buy that brand elsewhere. And sorry, and D says uh, the demand will may be quite price sensitive. Obviously B and D are linked together. So either B comes before D or D comes before, before B. Could be either ways. And A gives you the context of what exactly is happening. What are we talking about? We are talking about branded disposable diapers. That is the reason why A is the sentence starter. B and D will come together in whichever order. And then C, E and F will follow. That is the reason why it is answer option 3. Fine. I hope everyone got this. Okay. In case you have doubts, again, please let me know. I can explain it again. Otherwise, we can move on to the, uh, to the next question. Question five, a lot simpler than what we did just now.
no karthik i didn't uh, i started off with a session straight away uh, what we can do is at the end uh, once the session is done at the end let's uh, take around 15 to 20 minutes and then we can discuss all the queries and probably i'll explain how to start for vrc preparation also okay yeah i think all of you have got it correct again this was a pretty this this is a good example of a question that usually comes on the lower to moderate difficulty level in cat okay so if you're getting this then great uh, anyway let's discuss this the moment you see words like this on the other hand immediately check for what should come before this okay so if you're saying the state governments on the other hand so what is happening on one hand you're talking about the central government right so logically look at what the central government is doing and look at the meaning of the sentence from here to here and try and get a sentence which talks about the central government and what it is doing so analogous to this right and probably that sentence if you read all the uh, all the statements then probably you would come to know that b is that state uh, that sentence right so b says the central government has sought to deny earlier apprehensions and state government on the other hand is alleging that whatever center is only doing so and so things so b and d forms one link again if you look at the meaning again the meaning will lead you to the uh, to the correct order so you're talking about inadequate monsoon here you're talking about recent revival of the rains here so you are talking about alarm being sounded out by the center and the states regarding inadequate monsoon whereas he says the recent revival has led to emergence of line of divide so what is this line of divide the central government has sought whatever state government has done this and so and so okay and that is uh and after this the phase off will continue is what the senior functionary is saying right so e is your study sentence starter or paragraph starter e starts out st starts of the paragraph c says the reason c talks about what has changed there is a recent revival of rains and then b and d will come together so b says central government d says state government and then a gives you the conclusion the phase off will continue for several months and so on so on. so that is the reason why e c b d a is the uh is the correct uh, order of the sentences right again with the options it was pretty straight forward let's go to question 6 
Okay, if no one else is trying, then yeah. Yeah, I think all of you again have got the answer correct. So B, E, D, C, A is the answer. Uh, again, not that difficult a question, but probably one or two sentences may have been a little difficult to figure out. Anyway, so from reading the sentences, clearly B has to be the paragraph starter, right? So one of the unsettled scientific questions was the exact nature of the shape of the earth. It gives you the context of what is being discussed in the other four sentences. So shape of the earth. E carries off from that point. E says the shape of the earth is known somewhat, but it is not known how much, right? So it is known that it is not a sphere, but an oblate spheroid, more curved and flatter at the poles. But the question of how much more was yet to be established. So E carries on from what B is saying. And then we are talking about how the measurement has to be done in A, C and D. Now C talks about length of one degree arc. Okay. And what is D saying? D is saying that you determine the length of the arc. So D is saying you determine the length of the arc and C says length of one, de one degree arc could be less. So obviously D comes first because we are, we are saying that this is what we have to determine and C goes on further from that point. So D says one way of doing that is to determine the length of the arc along this at one degree, at one degree latitude separation. And C says the length of one degree R could be less. And A says this fact, again, demonstrative pronoun, this, this fact, again, which fact are we talking about? The fact that is mentioned in C, right? So this fact was established in the 1730s who found that, and they went to the equator, they went to the Arctic. So they went to both of the places, the equatorial latitudes and to the poles. And they found that uh, around the middle of the earth, the arc was about a kilometer shorter. So that is the reason why the, the link would be or the uh, order would be B, E, D, C, A, right? Okay, in question seven, one and six are fixed. You just simply have to rearrange A, B, C, and D. Okay, again, a good question. Uh, I don't think anyone has got this correct. Okay, let's look at the question. 
So here you're saying that commercially reared chicken can be unusually aggressive and are often kept in darkened sheds to prevent them pecking at each other. Okay. A says they spend most of their time pecking at the inanimate objects in the pens in contrast to birds. That means it is talking about something else. B says in low light conditions they behave less belligerently but are prone to something. C says in an experiment aggressive head pecking was all but eliminated in the enriched environment. And D says altering the bird's environment by adding bales of wood shavings to their pens can work wonders. Okay, now look at this logically. Out of these four sentences, which one should follow one? Obviously, has to be sentence B, right? Because you're talking about low light conditions still. So here you are saying are kept in darkened sheds to prevent them pecking at each other. And in B, you give what is the reason? So in low light conditions, what do they do? They behave less belligerently. They're not as violent as they were previously, but they are prone to whatever, to ophthalmic disorder, eye disorders and respiratory problems and so on. So obviously B should come after one. Okay, I hope everyone got this point. So B should be coming immediately after one because A, C and D all talk about something else. C should be before B. Uh, Sunny, no, that will not be correct because in C you are talking about doing an experiment. So you are saying that I'll be doing an experiment or they are doing an experiment in which aggressive head pecking was eliminated. But then you have moved on from that point. B is not talking about this experiment. Okay, I hope you are not misread the question. In B, you are saying in low light conditions. In C, what are you talking about? C is, saying, C is talking about an experiment in which you are altering the environment by adding bales of wood shavings. So C is talking about a different experiment. B is talking about the initial case where they are kept in darkened sheds. So I hope everyone understood the meaning. So initially the sentence, the paragraph starts off by saying that commercial chickens are kept in darkened sheds to prevent them from picking one another. And what happens in the sheds? In low light conditions, they don't, they are not very aggressive. And because of this, they don't peck other chicken. But this is uh, again, not that uh, uh, advantageous because they, the chickens will suffer from eye disorders. But what is the solution for this? The solution is that there is, uh, we change the bird's environment by adding bales of wood shavings. What happens in this? Because of adding this, in adding, by adding this, the aggressive head pecking is eliminated. And what happens? They instead concentrate their uh, efforts and energies in, in pecking at the bales of wood shavings and not at the other chicken. Okay, so this is basically what the paragraph is trying to say. So if you understood that B is the sentence coming after one, then I think among A, C and D, you can arrange the order. So B comes after one. Afterwards, C says in an experiment was eliminated in the enriched environment. So enriched environment, that means C can't come immediately after B because we are not sure of what the enriched environment is. So that is the reason why D should come before C because D gives an example or D gives a description about what this enriched environment is. This enriched environment is simply adding bales of wood shavings, right? So that is the reason why D should come before C. C gives you what is happening in the experiment and A gives you the reason why aggressive head pecking is eliminated, right? The birds spend most of their time pecking at the inanimate objects. And C, 6 goes on, if you want, you can also uh, club it along with 6. 6 goes on and says that they uh, diminish aggressiveness and reduce injuries and so on. And that is the reason why B, D, C, A is the link. Okay, I hope everyone got this. Okay, fine. Again, a good question. So the, the, I think what happens is a lot of people will get trapped with C as the uh, a sentence coming immediately after one because you sort of are contrasting it here and then you miss out on B, right? So just be a little careful. I think B, uh, D, C, A is the answer for this question. Okay. Again, with the options, it becomes pretty obvious. All right. Question eight.
Okay, again a tough one. I'll show you the options and then see if we can figure out which one is correct. So both the answers are in the options. Uh, yes. So it should be uh, either B or D. Correct. So again, which one will will be better? Is your is your decision point? Uh, yes, B is the answer, right? And not D. Okay, so probably uh, if you are doing it without the options, uh, maybe you would uh, end up picking one as the starting sentence and then uh, you would go on from there. Okay, but then the problem is that there is a better way of framing it. So if you look at this, I was casually in position. What position is this talking about, right? So it is talking about this part where he, uh, this person went back to the bank again and sheltering whatever, whatever, command the road before our door. And I was scarcely in position. So basically this person went, went to that bank again and then he was scarcely in position when the enemies began to arrive. And post this, I think it's pretty straightforward. So they arrived, three men ran together and whatever. The, the person, the author says that I made out that the middleman was a blind beggar and the next moment he showed that I was right. So three and four will obviously come together. After one, three and four will come. I think the only problem was where to put two. Should you put it right at the end or should you put it right at the start? And even if you looked at these two possibilities and you checked which one was better, then probably you would arrive at B as the answer. Okay. So again, if you had options as it was in, this is a question from Zat, I think 2013, if I'm not mistaken. So you had the options in that case to work with. So probably a little more simpler. So you can compare B and D and then figure out which one is better. But even if you didn't have the options, I think you can simply put two before one and then check if it is fine. Put two after uh, four and uh, and check whether it is okay and check which one is better. Okay, so that will give probably lead you to the right answer. Uh, for brownie points, can anyone tell me which what is the source for this? Okay, not clear between one and two. Uh, Kamlendu, see the thing is uh, in this case. What is one talking about? One is saying I was scarcely in position when my or before my enemies began to arrive and so on, so on, right? And with the lanterns and bases. Now you have a choice. So let's leave out one. Let's leave out two, sentence two. Let's look at one, three, and four. So one says that eight, seven or eight of the enemies came, three of them ran together, and the author guess that the middle person was a blind beggar. And next moment his voice showed me that I was right. So one, three, four is the link. I hope you are fine with this. So one, three, four becomes your link. Okay. That is probably the easier part. Now you have to figure out where two will come. Should two come at initially that is before one or should, or should two come at the end that is after four, right? This is your decision point. Now, what I'm saying is that you put two in both these places, you put it right at the start and you put it right at the end and you see which one makes better sense. So, Fourth one says, the next moment his voice showed me that I was right. And my curiosity, whatever, whatever, where I crept, where I might command the road before our door. Now, if you are saying this, then basically, what you, uh, if, you are, if you are talking about commanding the road before our door, then basically, this putting two before one will make sense, right? Because only then will the author be able to figure out what the enemies are doing, right? And also, you are talking about the person being scarcely in position. Right? Being scarcely in position. So what is this part talking about? This part is talking about the previous part, right? Where the curiosity of the author was stronger than the fear and the author crept back to the bank again where he might command the road. And the author was scarcely in position when the enemies began to arrive. So that is the reason why two will come before one. Okay, so logically thinking between these two options that I told you, you should think as to which one will come before the other. Okay, and then you can probably arrive at the answer as B. Okay. I hope you got it. So uh, as I was saying for brownie points, does anyone know what is the source of this? In case anyone has read this? Yes, this is Treasure Island. Okay. So that again, there were two questions from Treasure Island in this that paper. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's great. That was quick. 
So yeah, so this is Treasure Island again, fascinating book. In case you haven't read it, probably I think you can just give it a shot right now. And uh, this is question nine. So this was the other part again from Treasure Island. Okay, so just try this out again. Yeah, this is tough. Should I show the options? Okay, I'll go to the options. Just work with whatever you have done so far and just see which one would be the answer. I think uh, the trap in this case is the starting sentence. Okay, so you should not eliminate any sentence based on the fact that it starts with a word which can't be the sentence starter. Okay, so just be a little careful of that. Yeah, see, right? I think the trap was uh, sentence two. So sentence two is the starter for this. And probably I think you can come to the uh, to that part by looking at this part, right? This, the demonstrative pronoun. So what is this quarrel referring to? Is there a quarrel mentioned in one? No. Is there a quarrel mentioned in three? Again, no. Four and five? Again, no. So there is no quarrel mentioned, right? So if you're saying this quarrel, again, which quarrel are you talking about? So it's not present in the remaining four sentences. So probably two could be the sentence starter. Again, you're not sure then, but probably you have a hint as to this could be the starting sentence. But anyway, let's come back to the easy part. Him they had deserted. Who is him referring to? Obviously Pew. Which sentences talk about Pew? Sentence three, right? Talks about Pew here at the end. And sentence one talks about Pew here. Which should be the sentence? Which one should be the uh, out of one and three should be the sentence that comes before four? Obviously, it should be three, right? Can't be one. So 
if the person is himself talking about something something can't be him three obviously makes a lot more sense right you are saying that okay they ran from the last signal of danger and so on so on and so that in half a minute not a sign of them remained but few and him they had deserted so the others deserted few and then they ran in panic right so three and four makes sense is that a logical link yes so three and four will make sense again remaining part of uh, the remaining sentences 1 2 and 5 only one talks about pew again so obviously one is also has one also has to come along with 3 and 4 so one says finally he took a wrong turn four is talking about he remained behind tapping up and down the road in a frenzy and whatever 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 and then one says finally he took a wrong turn and ran a few steps past me and said you won't leave old pew again looking at the sentences uh, logically again one should follow four Right, so three, four, one becomes one link. Is this fine so far? Three, four, one. Is this okay? If you, if this is where you, uh, if if you came till here, then probably I think it would have been easier. So three, four, one becomes a link. You are left with two and five. Uh, sorry, five says almost at the same time. As the same time as what? As the same time as this, right? Sound came of the tramp of horses galloping. so at the same time as this there was a pistol shot so there was a sound which came here there was another sound here and that was plainly the last sign of last signal of danger and because of this everyone ran so there were two sounds one was uh, whatever came from the top of the hill of tramp of horses galloping almost at the same time there was a pistol shot and this was the last signal of danger and hearing these two sounds all of them ran from here except for this person pew him they deserted not knowing whatever why they left him behind but basically this person le was left behind and he remained there tapping up and down in a frenzy and finally he took a wrong turn and he started calling out for people right so that is the reason why 25341 becomes your link so again logically you have to work out with the easier options first easier statements first so in this case the easier statement was obviously the ones concerning pew so him they are deserted becomes probably the easier sentence to tackle before four you should find you should figure out which one should come Obviously, three should come before four. One also talks about pew. One will come after four. That's why three, four, one becomes a link. You are left with two and five. Among two and five, which one should come first and which one should come second is your uh, decision point. So you can come to two, two, four, a uh, two, five, three, four, one as your option. Right? I hope this is fine. Okay. Again, in case you are not sure, just let me know. I can I can explain any other part again. Okay. fine let's go to question 10 again uh, this is a little tricky okay looks easy but a little tricky so try this out Okay, good. I think everyone has got this. Yeah, it is DCBA. I think the problem comes because uh, of this part. I groaned and inquired whether he could give me something for acute gastric cramp. So probably some people may end up thinking that he did A first and then he went on to C, right? So A with that I swallowed the shampoo, got a gastric attack, and that's why C happens. So that is a confusing part. But I, again, if you read the sentences properly, I don't think it should be. Uh, you can easily avoid this trap. So obviously DCBA should be the answer. So while the pharmacist was wrapping up a six-ounce bottle of the mixture, I think 
popular shampoo mixture again that makes it very easy right popular shampoo mixture while the pharmacist was wrapping up the mixture i groaned and inquired and when the man shuffled away to get the uh, the medicine for uh, for gastric cramp uh, this person the author got through on the telephone and then swallowed the shampoo so again logically bcba will be the answer right okay i got five more questions so uh, i hope no one minds me going forward right so let's do the remaining five okay if you have time then i'll be very happy to do this so let's go to the remaining five questions so try out question number 11 again uh, the statements 1 and 6 will remain fixed so you only have to arrange a b c and d Okay, again a tricky one. Uh, you just need to understand the meaning of this. So once you get the meaning, so probably I think you should be able to work it out. I'll go to the next slide, which contains the options. Maybe you can check it. Okay, I think if everyone has attempted, let me explain this. Okay, the answer is D A C B. Uh, again, a little difficult, probably without the answer options, but still, I think can sort of get me or the answer. Okay, so the meaning of this uh, entire paragraph is the most important thing. So if you read all the sentences, then I think you get a fair idea of what the meaning is. So initially, there were these high-powered outboard outboard motors, and beluga whales were hunted. but then you have a few sentences saying that they have learned to avoid them right and the last sentence says that uh, they have used a well known sensitivity to evolve an avoidance strategy so i think that gives you the sort of the logical context or the logical flow of the entire paragraph initially you are talking about how they were caught and the latter part talks about how they have evolved right so let's look at the sentence uh, let's look at the uh, options uh, at the sentences so a says with these hunters could approach belugas within hunting range 
and profit from the inner skin and blubber. Again, with these, what is these talking about? Probably could be the outboard motors in one, but it could also be the outboard motors here, right? I think that is where the trap lies. So if you pick A immediately after one, then probably I think you would go wrong. Uh, because even D could be the possible uh, antecedent of this pronoun. So anyway, let's leave that aside for now. B says to escape an approaching motor, belugas are learned to dive to the ocean and stay there for up to 20 minutes. So this is the latter part of the paragraph, right? What I talked about, that they have evolved and that is the reason why they are able to uh, avoid these motors. So probably B will come right at the end, next to probably next to 6 or maybe only one sentence will come in between B and 6. Again, not very sure. So again, let's keep that aside. C says, today, however, even with much more powerful engines, it is difficult to come close because the whales seem to disappear. So initially you're talking about with something, hunters could approach belugas. But now, even with much more powerful engines, it is difficult to come close. Right? So that is where the, the flow changes here because of this part. Right? So C says, however, it is much more difficult. B says, what do they do? They dive to the ocean. And 6 says that they are evolved. So logically, these three sentences form a link. C, B, and 6. Right? Because C says that, okay, uh, what do they do? They disappear. How do they disappear? By diving to the ocean bottom and staying there for up to 20 minutes. And 6 is talking about the conclusion. Right? They have used their well-known sensitivity to evolve an avoidance strategy. Right? And B is that avoidance strategy. So C, B, and 6 form a link. Now you are left with A and D. So obviously, as I said, if you put A next to 1, the problem is that D will not fit anywhere. Okay, so you can't say A and D. Because D and B will not form, because then that link will not be correct. So what is the better option? The better option is to put D first. Right? Again, look at the flow if I put D first. So high power, uh, 1 says high powered outboard motors were considered to be the major threat. D says with, when the first outboard engines arrived, 1 came across 4 HP and 8 HP. And with these, the initial motors, the initial high-powered motors that were first made, hunters could approach them. But what is happening now? Today, even with much more powerful engines than 4 HP and 8 HP, the whales disappear. How do they disappear? By diving to the ocean bottom. And basically, this is the avoidance strategy that they have evolved. So that is the reason why DACB is the answer. Okay, fine. Again, looking at the meaning of the sentence, looking at the flow of the sentence, probably you can understand as to how it should flow. So if you understood the flow, then probably you would mark B next to 6. And then you would probably contrast it with, uh, with C and uh, A. And then you would know that logically you are talking about what is the current situation and you will put C before B. And then you are only left with A and D. And then you can figure that out. Right? So DACB is the answer. Fine. Okay, next one. Very simple.
Okay. Uh, fine. Let's discuss this. Yeah. The answer is B A B E D A C. Again, this is not that difficult. So if you look at the, if you notice the transition words, then probably I think it'll be a lot simpler. So look at E. It says we therefore traced. Why did they trace? Because they have been recorded, but the status was unknown. Right? Fights were recorded, but the status was was unknown. And to ascertain the status, what happened? We therefore traced two sixty eight intruder mails. So B E forms a link, right? So out of these two sixty eight intruder mails that we saw, we recorded seventeen cases, right? So B forms the first sentence. A comes next, and D gives you an even more specific case. Out of these two sixty eight cases, right? Recordings. So out of these two sixty eight intruder mails that we saw. We recorded seventeen cases in which a resident was fighting an intruder was joined by a neighbor, and what happened in such a fight? The two neighbors never fought each other. Instead, what did they do? They pushed or grappled only with the intruder. Right? That is the flow of the entire paragraph. So B comes first, E comes next. We're talking about the number of uh, recordings that were done. D gives you a specific instance of uh, what what we are talking about. That is of uh, intruder fighting a, a resident fighting an intruder, and what happens in such cases? The two neighbors will never fight. They will only push or grapple with the intruder, and that is the reason why B E D A C is the link. Fine. Uh, I have three more questions. Should we go on or should we stop? I mean, if it is becoming too much for you to handle on one day, then we can stop. Otherwise, I don't mind going on. Okay, so whatever you guys say. Okay, great. Okay, next Yeah, again, a confusing one. Uh, probably, I think understanding it is not a problem. But then you are faced with a situation as to which the sentence will come before, after which uh, one sentence will come after which other sentence, right? So let's look at this. Uh, here you are saying that you are for days. I think C is the sentence starter. I think uh, the paragraph starter, right? All of you have got that correct. So C says that when you have been going uh, for days through a mountain pass, a moment will come when you are winding around. And surely you will come upon the plane. D also says the same thing. Surely after this you will see the plane. So C and D are sort of talking about the same thing, and A and B talk about the same thing, right? So A says instead you are faced with another huge crack. B says no, the path winds on and another mountain bars your way. So which one is it? Is it C and B or is it C and A? It's your decision point. Again, in this case it becomes a question of probability. So which one is more probable? Will B? Come after C is that better, 
or should B come after D? That is your decision point. And that is where you need to make a decision as to which one is better, right? So here you are saying, you will, uh, after winding around the great mass of rock in front of you, you will come upon the plane. Is it better to start the sentence with no after C? Or is it better to start the sentence with no after D? This is the question, right? Is it better to start the sentence with no after reading C? Or is it better to start the sentence with no after reading D? Okay, which one will be better? Will it be C or will it be D? Should be D, right? Surely after this, you will see the plane? No. The path winds on another mountain bars your way, right? If you are simply saying, see, basically the point is which one is better, okay? Which one is better language? So if you are simply stating the fact in C, what are you doing? You are simply stating a fact, right? When you have been going for a, uh, when you have been going through a mountain pass, a moment will come when you are sure that after winding, whatever, whatever, whatever. But what happens? Instead, you are faced with another mountain. And D says, surely after this, you will see the plane. And now the question is, which one will come after this? Will it be A or will it be B? So the problem in this is, it's a little ambiguous. This question is a little ambiguous, but then you have to make a decision as to which one is better. Will it be B coming after C or will it be A coming after C? Right? So after C, uh, yeah, Sapna, after C is what I was saying. So after C, uh, okay, I think I made a mistake in what I was saying. So after C, obviously it should be A coming. Okay. And after D, it should be B coming. Right. I think I made a mistake in what I was trying to say. So yes. So after C, since you are simply stating the fact, you will simply state another fact that instead you are faced with another crack. And D talks about a more emphatic statement. Surely after this, you will see the plane. And B, B says no. Surely after this, you will see the plane. No. The path winds on another mountain bar survey. And that is the reason why the answer is C A D B. Okay. I hope I understood. I didn't confuse you. Uh, my basic point is that whenever you want to say no, the path winds on, you will say this for a more emphatic statement and not for a descriptive statement. And that emphatic statement comes with D, right? Surely after this, you will see the plane, but no, it, this doesn't happen. The path winds on another mountain will bar your way. Right? That is the reason why DB is a better answer, better link than whatever we, whatever is the other one. Right? So that is the reason why D, uh, C, A, D, B is your answer. Okay. I hope this is okay. I hope I didn't confuse you. So C, A, D, B will be the answer for this. Okay. In case you are still not sure, just let me know after the session and probably we can discuss it again. Okay. 14, slightly longer one, but very easy. Okay, in 14, A is fixed. The position of A is fixed. Okay, so A is the sentence starter or the paragraph starter and B, C, D and E have to be arranged.
कि सपना इफ यू हैव टू चूज विच वन विल यू चूज सी बी डी वर्सेज बी सी डी यस यस आई थिंक एवरीवन हैज गॉट दिस या द आंसर इज सी बी डी राइट सो अगेन ए इज फिक्स दैट वॉज वेडी ऑब्वियस इवन इफ आई डेंट टेल यू आई थिंक यू वुड नो दैट ए इज द सेंटेंस स्टार्ट ऑफ Uh, so a start of a starts off with talking about what the kqu uh, what whatever uh, they are doing so about the land and so on and then c has to be the sentence coming after a right because c talks about what these people are or what they uh, view the relationship as whereas the other three sentences that is b d and e talks about farmland about what it is growing or what they are growing so b d and e will sort of come together and c comes separately so either c has to come right at the end or c has to come right at the start and obviously c coming at the start makes a lot more sense because you talk about the squatters and then you talk about what they grow instead of vice versa right so c will come after a now we are left with b d and e b d and e talk about what they grow and again you need to sort of understand try and get what is the meaning so b talks about the land being more intensely alive and was changing the year round and the maize grew up higher so this is where it starts off by grow, by talking about what is happening in the land and so on so obviously b starts off by talking about what happens in the land and hence that will come before d and e e also says ripened in the fields were gathered so that means e should be coming after b some some time after b and d says they also grew the sweet potatoes so obviously this should also come somewhere after b and that is the reason why b will come before d and e right so c comes immediately after a b will come immediately after c and you know you are not uh, left with d and e so the only choice is whether is as to which one comes first does d come first or does e come first now since you already talked about maize in b that is why in e if you are talking about the maize stalks again were collected in bur then obviously e makes better sense right coming after b immediately because it makes sense to sort of talk about maize and then finish off that idea here and then go and talk about sweet potatoes later on rather than talking about maize talking about sweet potatoes and then coming back to maize which is not a bad, which is not a good way of constructing a paragraph right so that is why c comes first b comes next uh, e comes next after that and d is the last sentence right so c b e d is your link okay in the last sentence and the last one again not that difficult
okay 10 more seconds okay fine yeah dbac is the answer okay again looking at the meaning of the sentence probably i think you can arrive at this so let's look at the transition words again uh here we are saying unsettle the balance unsettle the balance what balance this balance right proportion of soldiers to workers remains roughly the same so that means b should be coming somewhere sometime before a c says but its fortunes are presently restored so how are they restored and again but is a transition word which indicates a change in the direction of what is happening right so but its fortunes are presently restored that means something bad has happened before c and that is being depicted by a right hungry predators often invade the colony and unsettle the balance and so if you put a and c together then it makes sense a says hungry predators will invade the colony and unsettle the balance and c says but the fortunes are presently restored because the queen will lay eggs in numbers and so on so right so a and c form a link b will come somewhere before a now we are left with only one sentence which is d d says the hump is alive with uh, worker termites and soldier termites obviously if you put d right at the start it will make a lot more sense than putting it at the end because you already started talking about what happens when predators come in and so on and then here you are having this word coming here and this word coming here so obviously sorry so obviously it indicates that uh this d will immediately follow the first sentence right and that is why immediately after one you will have d then you will have a uh, then you will have b sorry and then you will have a and c coming together and then then you can ask this question see how we, uh, how we can account for this mysterious ability so what is the mysterious ability because it lays x on in not only large enough numbers but in the varying proportions required and this is the mysterious ability right so that is the reason why db ac is your answer Yeah, I hope you got this. Fine, I think that's it uh, for today's session. It was a little intensive, probably it went on for a lot more than what uh, we had planned. But anyway, I hope it was useful. Uh, if you have any feedback, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, I can. I have ten minutes. We can discuss any doubts if you have. Okay, the doubts need not be limited to, to today's session. Can be generic. Could be on anything. Could be on prep. Could be on strategy. Could be on verbal. or could be also on a generic quant and lrti okay in case someone wants me to wants to ask okay any doubts ha uh, yeah uh, what should be a daily plan uh, see karthik uh, probably what uh, Lot, what a lot of candidates or aspirants miss out on is reading. I think uh, one, that is one sort of aspect that a lot of people need to do. So even if you're not practicing reading comprehensions or or parajumbles or something specifically, then what I would suggest is that you read at least two or three articles every day, uh, if not books. Okay. So what happens is, uh, if you want, you can start reading of books, but then with books you generally uh, tend to go for fictional books, which Uh, don't allow you to sort of uh, read on different genres, right? So if if you're reading only fictional books, then you may not be reading on topics such as philosophy or topics such as uh, science, as an example. So generally, my suggestion is to simply read articles, and the article should be from two or three good sources. So the sources that I generally recommend are uh, one is the Economist, second is the New York Times, and the third one is the New Yorker. Okay, so these three are probably the recommended sources. And in fact, if you look at past editions of the CAT, you will find a lot of. Uh, I just type it out here. So, Economist, New York Times, and New Yorker. If you look at past editions, you would generally find that one passage is from any one of these three sources. So, my suggestion is that you pick up. one article from each of these sources every day and try and vary your uh, vary the genre in which you are picking it up so let's say that one day you are picking up one from philosophy the next day you pick up one from let's say art third day from geography third day from fourth from history and so on so try and pick up from different uh, 
so, uh, different genres and try and read an article every day. Uh, just read the article without stopping anywhere. Once you're done reading that article, just sort of breeze through the entire article again and look out for vocabulary words which you are not sure of in the first reading. Right? You can go and check what, are, what is the meaning of those words again later on if you want. But then probably as long as you keep doing this, you will get a good idea of, of first of all, you will be reading a lot of material relevant to the cat. And the second thing is obviously your vocab will also improve even though you're not preparing specifically for vocabulary. So I think if you're, even if you're not doing RCs or PJs daily, I think you should be doing at least this. Okay, so the plan is, at least for the online course, is to uh, share a lot of articles on the group. Okay, so probably we may create a separate group, but even if we don't, at, on the current group that is there, the Cat Preparation with Learning Roots group, I'll be sharing articles, maybe not daily, but on a regular basis. So at least read those articles. And uh, probably I think that should at least suffice for now uh, on weekdays. On weekends, obviously, yes, you should be doing RCs, you should be practicing RCs, you should be pra practicing PJs. So in terms of number, I think it totally depends on you. If you feel that you are not very good, then probably you should be practicing a lot more. In case you feel that, okay, you are at a good level already, then maybe not that much of practice would be required. So yeah, I think in terms of verbal, one area, one problematic area is where should we practice questions from? Because there is no good book as such for practice. So the one thing that I would recommend for practicing initially is to simply look at past CAD questions. Okay, so there are quite a, I mean, there's a lot of questions from past CAD papers. Uh, even if you go to Learning Roots, uh, the site, the website, and go to free downloads, I think is the tab on, on top. I think you can download all the past papers from there. So look, have a look at all the past questions. I think even that should take a lot of time for you to finish. So look at those questions. After you're finished or after you're done with this, probably you may want to look at uh, GMAT material for reading comprehension alone. Okay, so for reading comprehension, what you can do is refer GMAT material, probably uh, either one of Veritas, Manhattan or Kaplan. Okay, again, I'll just type it out. Uh, no, the RCs aren't different from CAT. Okay, so you would not find that much of a difference to be honest. And the RCs are really good. And the advantage of preparing from GMAT is that the material is authentic. So you will have good explanations coming from this. So either you pick up the uh, pick up any of these sources or you pick up something called the official guide. Right, you pick up this. Yes, Sapna, as I mentioned, official guide. Again, pretty, all of these are really good sources. So if you're going, if you're picking up RCs from any of these four sources, then I don't think you will be going wrong. So even if you attempt, let's like, say one or two RCs every day, if you can, then I think you will be improving a lot in RC. Okay. So the only, I, I think we'll be doing a session on reading comprehension next time. So again, we, I, I can solve your uh, doubts particular to that particular topic next time. But then on a generic level, I think this is what you should be doing. So looking at past CAD papers, and then looking at uh, these specific areas from the GMAT. And then once you, uh, once the mocks will, once the mocks start, uh, probably in May or June, I think after that it becomes simply a matter of solving mocks, taking them, and then analyzing the areas where you're going wrong, and then working on those areas. So then it will become a sort of a iterative approach. So by, if you're, let's say that you're done with the portion by March or in, uh, by May or June, then simply it's a matter of taking mocks and then working on your mistakes from there. Okay, in terms of mocks for uh, VRC, IMS is best. Uh, probably any one of IMS time and career launcher. I think what we generally suggest in class, and we don't really, I mean, uh, refrain from taking names, but then in terms of uh, mocks, I think either one of these three will be fine. Probably the one thing that we suggest in class is that if you have uh, other friends also preparing for, the, for, for CAT, then one of you can take career launcher, one of you can take IMS, the other person can take time, uh, and so on. And probably you can do this. And then you can mix and match. So one, the first test you can take off IMS, the second test you can use your friend's login and then go for time and so on. So you end up saving money and then you get a feel of different tests also at the same time. Complain the bullseye, uh, to be honest, is uh, I would not really recommend. Okay, so I would rather suggest that you stick with time, IMS or CL. I think these three are the best. Bullseye again comes out with a lot of free mocks. So if you want practice then probably you can try attempting those mocks, that is okay but I wouldn't recommend purchasing it separately. 
Okay, so if you want to purchase mocks, then better stick to IMS Time or CL. I think these are a lot more authentic than a than other sources which are there in the market. Uh, should I master my grammar basics before approaching questions? Uh, probably yes, but the problem uh, or but the good thing probably Abhishek is that is that is that grammar isn't tested that often. At least in the last two years of CAT, there has hardly been anything on grammar. But yes, it makes a lot of sense to practice grammar. And we will be doing uh, grammar in the further session that we will come across. So we will be doing grammar, grammar based uh, questions also after discussing the theory. So yes, probably I think it makes sense. So now is the time, right? You have a lot of time for remaining for the cat. So I think this is the time, the next two or three months probably is a time to sort of get your concepts in place because afterwards it becomes simply a matter of taking mocks and then getting yourself better at whatever areas you feel you are weak in. So I think, Yes, if you are approaching grammar basics, I think right now is the time for you to do it. Uh, for grammar, GMAT's SE will suffice. It's a very good book, to be honest. So if you go to Manhattan, uh, again, I'll just write it down. So Manhattan SE is the book for preparing uh, for preparation for sentence correction for the GMAT. Uh, but the thing is that if you're preparing from this, I think it will help a lot, to be honest, for the cat. So the some of the theory becomes a little too tough. Uh, and those will not get tested for the cat, but then still it makes a lot of sense trying, uh, doing this because it will help you sort of deal with even tougher questions than what is only tested in, in cat. So again, the same thing, what I mentioned earlier, this is now the time to prepare for grammar theory. So if you have time, then I would suggest that you refer to this book. I think it makes a lot of sense doing it right now. And probably along with this, I will suggest something else. Uh, There is this app called the Magoosh GMAT idiom flashcards. So download this. I think it's available on Android and uh, on iOS. So just download this. And whenever you are traveling or whenever you have a little bit of free time, just use this for five minutes. I think more than, I think even if you do it for five minutes in a day, I think that should be enough. So basically you will get accustomed or you will get used to idioms. So it's a pretty good app. It's a, a nice app for knowing where you are going wrong because it's a iterative app. So wherever you're going wrong, it will keep repeating that again and again. So again, a good app to download and then probably use right now. Okay. So if you keep doing this, I think that should be fine. It should this, if you keep doing for the next two, two and a half months, I think you should reach a very, a pretty good level in grammar. And beyond that, I don't think you require too much because to be honest, CAT doesn't test you much on grammar. So you will be requiring it mostly for IFT, for SAT and for other tests. So for CAT, probably I think the pattern, I, I don't know, it's too, it's early days still, but then most probably the pattern will remain the same looking at the past trend. So anyway, let's see, but then better to be prepared. So I think now is the time to start preparation for grammar also. Okay, fine. Anything else? Again, once we start, once we do the other topics, then I think uh, a lot of these topics will get covered within the next one to two months and post that it will simply be a question of taking practice sessions. So I think you will get enough practice for you to, to bump up your score. Okay. Being an OMS would may Matt Atma be considered. Uh, Sapna, I think better to contact Prasad or Shashank for this. I generally don't look much into CET uh, admissions part, but then I don't think it is considered to be honest, but I think just to confirm with Prasad or Shashank, I think they will have a better idea about this. Uh, Karthik, my name is Sriram. I think if you're on the group, then probably you would know. Okay. Yeah. Cat English enough for GMAT? Uh, no, it doesn't work vice versa. Okay. So GMAT English is good for cat, but not vice versa because cat generally tests, uh, you on a very basic level. Okay. So if you are, for example, if you take the chapter on modifiers in GMAT, uh, it goes into a lot of detail on the GMAT. So. I would suggest that you do it the other way around. So if you, if you are thinking of preparing for the GMAT, then use GMAT material. Don't use any CAT material as such. Okay. Uh, is there any WhatsApp group for this preparation? Uh, Sina, yes, we'll be forming a group soon uh, for online students. So just give us a couple of days. Uh, since we were doing only demo sessions this week, we are waiting for people to confirm. Once that is done, I think we will add all of you onto the uh, WhatsApp group soon. Okay. Okay, fine. If there is, if there are no more queries, then let's stop.
I hope this has been useful. If you have any feedback, do let me know and I can improve on these sessions as per whatever you say. Okay, so let's stop for the day. Have a happy weekend and uh, probably we will meet on Monday again. Okay. Yeah, good night.